This is from Electric. Auto emissions could have dropped by 30%, but SUVs ruined it for everyone. So they're blaming the fact that emissions haven't gone down more because people have switched to SUVs. And I guess it depends on what you define as an SUV, because I've been into some pretty damn small SUVs. There's some out there I didn't realize that made SUVs as small as they are. I mean, could you call a smart car an SUV? I mean, it's still, it kind of stands up tall, right? I mean, it's, you know, the rolling yeah, egg. Yeah. SUVs represent 51% of the new car market. The average light duty vehicle weight has bulked up to an all time high of more than 1.5 tons. The size of SUVs is growing with a footprint averaging around 4.2 square meters, about 45 square feet. Plus automakers make a huge profit from SUVs, which are sold at premium prices, but have a proportionally lower manufacturing cost. So they are eager to market them to consumers. Well, the best selling car in the world is the Tesla Model Y. I mean, it, technically it's a crossover, but it's still mm -hmm. an SUV. Electric vehicles, which represent 15% of global new car sales in 2022, use three to six less times energy than ICE vehicles to travel the same distance. You know, part of the issue there is a lot of these global car sales are very small EVs being sold in China. And so their cars are smaller and the United States Americans are larger, Europeans are larger, and you know, they're just larger people. I'm a larger person, okay? You know, I'm not overweight, but I'm still six foot three and almost 250 pounds. Okay, I take up a lot of space. One of my tennis friends is six foot five, and I noticed he had a Chevy Bolt. And I was like kind of confused at first and he said he's comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that was yeah. kind of, you know, kind of interesting. Uh, the Bolt has a very high roof. So it, the ceiling's mm -hmm. up high mm -hmm. enough that he's okay in there. I've been in plenty of cars where my head was squished against the headrest, against the ceiling of the vehicle. And it, it's <laughs> kind of... I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm, I'm 6'1". Yeah. And I barely fit. Like airline seats. It's, yeah. And, you know, that, that much space between my knees. So I just think I'm any taller than that. This, this would be very uncomfortable. What's interesting is planes are flying full. And my understanding is you're using about less fuel by flying than you would if you were driving in a Prius cross country. Really? Like if you proportion it out per, yeah. per person? Per person on the plane. Yeah. yeah. It, it's very interesting to see how some of that mm -hmm. is because it, once you get to a certain altitude and you're in, in glide mode, the plane is just mm -hmm. sipping fuel. It just really yeah. doesn't use a whole lot of fuel once it gets mm -hmm. up to 35,000 feet. It just sort of glides almost to the target. That's awesome. Yeah. Most I'm of talking about SUVs though and the, the size it is. I mean, just anecdotally, we were talking about Toyota earlier. You talk about, you know, kind of their, their mid, mid to larger size SUV, like the Highlander. You know, right. They're smaller, small to mid size, the RAV4. And over the past decade, I mean, a RAV4 is the size of what a Highlander was 10 years ago. Oh, really? You know, the Highlander, they're even coming out with the new model. Uh, anecdotally, you know, it, it, they seem bigger to me at least. Um, and now they're coming out with an even new model, the Grand Highlander, which is even oh. bigger, you know, and it looks like and everything. And I'm not knocking it. I'm, I love the convenience, right? I have I have three kids and a dog, um, mm -hmm. a larger SUV and having that space and sticking to the luggage and, and everything like that. It's just, it makes sense. Now on, on the same hand, I, I think, you know, five, 10 years ago, um, you know, maybe 2015 ish gas mileage was pretty rough um, on right. a lot of those vehicles. But on the same hand, the new Toyota SUVs, they're all hybrid. Right. Um, the minivan, you know, their Sienna minivan gets 36 miles to the gallon highway and city like Big that's, that's fantastic yeah it's huge yeah. improvements that we've seen in that realm growing vehicle size is a huge problem which is threatening many aspects of sustainable mobility large heavy electric suvs while they have zero tailpipe emissions also have enormous battery and energy demands not to mention the fact they kill more pedestrians than any other vehicle <laughs> reversing the trend toward bigger and heavier vehicles is key to achieving more sustainable mobility a hundred years ago the reason we adopted the cars part of it was because horses were killing people and horses were running people over and killing them a number of you know pedestrian deaths from horse and buggies in big cities across the world was unacceptable along with the horse crap mm -hmm. problem and you know cars were the solution to that so now we're solving the car problem by switching to electric 
This report calls for governments to set caps on vehicle size on hybrid and electric cars as well as ICE to reverse the SUV trend and help accelerate the shift to smaller EVs. Paris is proposing one such restriction right now. You know, in Europe, I can kind of see it to a degree because the cities were designed, were designed for more cars. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you've got kind of a different situation. American roads were designed for to be kind of wide open and maybe not New York They're, City. Uh, but no, or one of the, the hallmarks of American achievement is the highway and interstate system, which is right move people large distances you know partially for military purposes in world war ii hey we can we can move people across the country quickly if we need to and now we have a lot of that at our disposal like it's just it's different it's americana you know the road trip right. and what it looks like you know what i want to be comfortable i want, I want this big we clunk and land cruiser type thing that's comfy you and not you and I live in a part of the country where SUVs and pickup trucks are very common. So in the middle of the United States, that stuff's really common. When you start getting into some of your larger coastal cities, it's not as common because they're harder to drive, they're harder to park. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you spend any time in New York or LA, there's nowhere to park those, you know, the bigger vehicles. You know, and so that's a, a bit mm -hmm. of a, a challenge, but where we're at, man, I, I live for Costco parking spaces. You know, not nothing better. Yeah, than Costco for it. Space. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.